Hello everybody, Richard Time here and today we are doing a live sweat session with Ross who's just started a YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description below to watch his videos. He's already banged four out, he's told me. Uh, so we're watching Ross and he's playing some, the equivalent of 10 and L on Poker Hero or New Poker. It says it's 2040 but it's in some crazy Thai currency so it's just 10 NL. So um, yeah, we're just going to watch Ross. Ross is going to do most of the play, a lot of the talking and I'm only going to butt in when I think I've got anything of use to say. So, hello, Ross. Hey, how you doing, buddy? You all right? Yeah, we're ticking over, bud. Yeah, good. Yeah, I just um, I just been set off. I've just mm. done a video um, that has um, lasted about an hour uh, before we got set up. So you know the tables are on action. I've got I'm quite deep on this one. Um, a decent profit here, seventy six. 76 chips. I had somebody make an absolute howler of a, a bet. We, um, I don't know, he didn't even have nothing. Like, the absolute zero. And he put in, like, most of his stack. Uh, I'm just going to barrel here with this. Um, so I don't think I would barrel here, to be honest. I think, like, in terms of, like, value, we, we haven't got a super value-heavy hand. Mm -hmm. uh, if we get raised, then it's not good. I think sometimes we might be value-cutting ourselves here. I know it's nice we pick up the flush draw, but um, yeah. So a, just check for back me, the, here. the flush draw means to me we have less reason to bet when we already have like showdown value. But right, so we just check us back here. Yeah, I think. Whatever you think, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to check it back. Yeah, yeah. my opinion. We actually had the perfect hand to get an extra street from there, didn't we? Yeah. The yeah, we did. Good. We were quite lucky in that sense. This. Um... <laughs> Wow, yeah. did we just fall King Jack of Hearts there to a to a single open? Well, from under the gun, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'd have been yeah. I'd have been a little tickle with that. I'm t I've got no discipline. You show me a gap suited hand, and I'm like, oh, pretty. Let's <laughs> fucking go. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. But there were just so many players behind to act. There. Yeah, I mean, just... yeah, I don't like flatting, but I think against some players, I could certainly be persuaded to three bet there. Yeah, but that player's got, you know, 60 big blinds. Are you, are you quite happy to get it all in? No, oh, I'm a fuck. No, not even remotely happy to get it all in. I'd, I'd just be three bit folding it. Yeah. I've actually just realised that I should have continuation bet there. Um, yeah, it was I a good board to attack, but I think in yeah. the multi-way pot, I'm less arsed. Heads up, I think it's a definite mistake not to see about that board. But multi-way, I don't think it's as bad because in these fishier games... People defend a lot more, like ASX, that they've probably got no business, you know, playing. Yeah, definitely. I so see that Tokyo Hawk guy, he's pretty good. He's so on. What, what do your tags mean, bud? Sorry to interrupt, but I forget to what? ask otherwise. What am I... Your different colours. Yeah, well, the colours are, um, you know, just a, kind of a, a, the reggae-type players that are, you know, not great but not terrible. I just kind of tend to mark them the light blue. Yeah, because I'm familiar uh, with that Zeke. I, I think I had him tagged red, as, and red for me is just like someone who's pretty tight. But I noticed on your video yesterday, you commented on Zeke saying, oh, he comes along, he seems to play every hand. So I was just wondering what your tags meant. And Yeah, well, it, it did. I mean, oh, no, it's nowhere near as tight as I thought, obviously. 9.31. Yeah, so he's, he's a bad I mean, player, isn't he? Yeah, I, I just marked him as um, a player who plays a lot. You know, yeah. not not gonna like the red. I tend to 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 get the reds, the guys that are playing a lot and winning. Okay, yeah. You know, um, like <sighs> red yeah. animal kingdom danger things like that. You know, I just uh, I always kind of go with the. Like, I'm not saying they're good regs because I'm I'm not 100 percent that there is any really good regs in in this um this kind of pool. No, I like in this pool when I describe it to people who. Want to know how it's like um, to the, like the thirty and L pool on Sky? Like there is some reasonable regs who would like can make life difficult, pretty aggressive. But there's also you know a decent number of fish. I mean, it's obviously nowhere near as soft as poker bros, but you do get the benefit of having some stats, and the regs aren't that good. So it's still definitely a um, a club where if you if you even half decent. Um, you, you can make money. It's just it's just no poker bros because poker bros is a fucking circus, isn't it? Yeah, well, I said <laughs> I think obviously with last week's episode, it's 
Poker Bros is, um, yeah, it's not. Yeah, well, it's like the Wild West, isn't it? So it's, there's lots of like dubious actors out there, but the games are just fucking sensational. So I'm like, yeah, well, if we if something goes wrong, then you know, just just it goes wrong. But I mean, I really like this. I like this this software better than Poker Bros. To be fair, um, I like the fact that the agent is like 100% confident in this club and like. 100% guarantees player funds no matter what goes wrong. Yeah, um, Rob's, a, Rob's a straight shooter. He is. He is. Um, That's uh, one thing about Rob. He's so, yeah. um, definitely a, a straight shooter. Yeah, he's, he calls a spade a spade, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's and, I, mean, sure. I think, I think you, know, you know Rob well enough to know that um, oh, he's... Oh, hello. Uh, Concentrate on your kings, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, mate. I've, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know how to play these kings. No too bad. Um yeah, it's, it's called a C bet. We'll, we'll go with a C bet. Um, we're not going to make it too huge, but we will be C betting. <laughs> and so um, I think the problem with that board is that it's just fucking. We got it so crushed. As pretty I, bad. I think it's check really or bet, it. like really, really. I think like you've only gone half pot there, but I think that's almost too big because we we blocked top pair. <laughs> um, you know, so we're kind of hoping someone's going to call us with like jacks or worse tens, nines. Didn't three bet pre? Yeah. Um, I mean, we we should definitely bet. Here, but I'd bet like, really quite small here. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, you'd want to be. Able, I think even like you know. F- I'd be a single digit me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like seven, six. Uh, maybe induce some spew from like maybe someone check raises at clubs now because they think you're weak. If someone's got a three, they're going to raise you all day anyway. Yeah, 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 definitely. No, it's, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's just so hard. You've it's very, very hard to get value. Of course yeah. it is. You flop top very, set. Very it's not easy to get value because what the fuck can they call with? You know, it has to be oh. the cooler, doesn't it? I'd much rather flop middle set or bottom set on a king high board because I think it's way more likely we're going to get value. Yeah, there's you know there's even the argument there on the turn to to check that back. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, yeah, you know, there's an argument to check back flop argument because it's just we're not. It's just so hard to get three streets of value with top set on that board because like what the fuck can they call down with unless they've got I've, the case I've, I've, seen some, I've seen some crazy shit I'm not going to yeah. lie mate there's <laughs> yeah. some crazy shit out there I've definitely seen well, it my, um, my mantra is pretty much never slow play in these clubs because there's no reason to because people just call but that board it was just so fucking locked down wasn't it with like what on earth can they have I mean they've called out the blinds so they maybe have some small medium pocket pairs and the occasional drawer and that's fucking it you know They've got no, yeah, they haven't got tens plus because no three bet came in. Um, and if they have got pocket tens, pocket jacks, are you going to get three streets on King High? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I should probably probably check back the turn. I think they are just, I don't think you ever get any value. Plus, it makes your hand look that a little bit more. Yeah, especially when, maybe when just you go... an occasional bluff. Somebody might turn pocket eights into a bluff on the river there or something, then. You know, they, or they might not they might even know they turn it into a bluff. They might just value bet pocket eights for who knows fucking what reason. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, um... I mean, I've seen some stuff when I've checked back turns. And I've seen some like weak made hands just betting into me, and I'm like, I try to figure out why the fuck they've done it, and I'm just like, I have no idea why they've done it. You know, it's it's it, are they bluffing? Well, the size they chose didn't look like a bluff. Are they value betting? Well, maybe, but what the fuck were they hoping to get value from? I think people just sometimes see a check and they just auto bet the next street for fuck knows what reason. Yeah, that's fucking me. That sounds like me. All oh, right, okay. Maybe, that sounds like me. Especially if it's you a can free explain bet it pot. to me then. <laughs> if it's a free bet pot and they go check, I'm like, oh, is this king? I bet, I bet, I bet. It doesn't matter what I've got, I'm bet. You know, uh, I'm like, oh, fuck, they've got ace king. The free bet men then they check, they've got ace king. I just like automatically, it's like the the, the, the fucking the range just goes down to ace king. Yeah, I think, and I think that's a natural thought process. So when you've got nothing, um, then you, we can try and bet, but I see people just like betting pocket fives into me when they do it, and I'm like, well, why are you betting pocket fives if if you put me on ace king, you know? <laughs> you maybe bet pocket fives. I, I don't fucking know. I'm losing my train of thought. But yeah, I've, I've seen some weird shit where people have have like bet hands that kind of. It's hard to to, to make a case for being a value bet, and the sizings they choose make it even harder to make a case for a bluff. And then I just assume people are just clicking fucking buttons and. Oh, I've just given up trying to, to work out what, what anyone's doing on this. And see, yesterday, we, obviously, we did that the 400 coin deposit yesterday. I ran that up to like 700 um, yesterday, and that was only playing the you know the the 2040. 
So it was like £75 profit in a day playing 10 and L for like, you know, four hours on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many hands can you get in in that, four hours? Well, the thing uh, is, you've, you've done that a few times. I mean, we, we I both know, know that it's... your biggest league isn't your, isn't, the that, isn't your A game, no. isn't even your yeah. B game. It's, your biggest league is you drop into C and D game with the, the yeah. higher frequency than is ideal. That's, I mean, I don't want to, you know, be rude no, to no, you no, because... Me. I've got a big fucking um, big shoulder. I, I know, but when it. people are watching us, I don't want to sound like I'm patronising you being condescending. But, I mean, if you delivered your A-B game, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have had the the, 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 the turbulence boxing. that you've had. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have had that. It's your, fuck it, I'm drinking whiskey and getting fed up game that kind of fucks yeah, you Yeah, it's fucking let's play six-card Omaha fucking <laughs> yeehaw fucking game. Like, yeah, let's I know play exactly. six-card Omaha when we've got about a litre of famous grouse down us. No, uh, I drink Fireball, mate. It's, never fucking heard of that. I've never mate, heard of that. It, it's a fucking, um, it's like a, a blended um, liqueur whiskey with cinnamon. Right, okay. Yeah, it is, um, it's, it's rather um, potent and it blows your fucking head off, makes you turn into a fucking animal. <laughs> and then you then you load the six card up and... Then it's reload, and then Reg. Six card up. And he, yeah. Needs another reload, Reg. I need another reload, Reg. The Reg, Fireballs yeah. fuck me <laughs> again. <laughs> I fucking hate this fucking board. I'm just going to fold this. I don't see a fucking good card coming here. Um, it's a bit nitty, but I don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, so I say I've done the I've done the video yesterday. Like the videos I'm finding are like therapy for me. You know, kind of like having a session with you on the Skype. Yeah. It's good that I can sit down. And, you know, you can't. You know, like, I felt like you reset my brain last week. Um, you know, kind of really made me feel like I was doing the right thing. Um, if I'm making videos, every time I do the video, that kind of keeps me in the same mindset. Yeah, you know, I I'm, yeah. In that, I'm in that mindset where, you know, things are things are good. I'm just going to cruise along. I'm going to talk through what I'm doing. This guy's fucking calling all my bets, so I'm just going to have the, the C bet here. I feel like I've probably got range advantage against them. Um, the call I'm not sure no you have bet. on that board. Yeah, we, uh, we have like all the big pairs he doesn't, but then he has all the sixes and four. Man, I just suppose we have a plenty in the on the button as well. Wow, he just banged that out, which is um yeah, that that lead really doesn't he fill me with confidence. I think it's call that's, flop it call yeah. now, isn't it? And then that's call amazing. small bets river, but don't call I mean that's a might slow him down a bit with the diamond coming. If your bet's big here, I think it's an easy fold. Yeah, I totally agree. If your bet's like seven or something then it gets a bit trickier. You got a nice easy check yeah, back. Yeah, easily check back now. Yeah, look at Wowie. that. Wowie. So he didn't bet the flush. He, so he semi bluffs and then doesn't bet when he gets there. And that That's is true. why yeah. we should not be paying off in these fucking games. Because, yeah. I mean, that is just an insanely weak check from him there. That's just <laughs> fuck the board's pen. They've got a baby flush. I don't want to get raised. I check. It's really bad poker. It's really bad poker. That's yeah, just a bet fold all day from him there. I'd been betting like two thirds pot, confidently expecting to get value. And then when you get raised, it's the easiest fold in the fucking history of time. Because you've got a low flush on a paired board and you've been raised on the river. Uh, yeah, that's it bad from him. That's really weak. Yep. I totally agree. I think... Um, I think I'm oh, but before right. I forget, by the way... Um, yes. You say you make recording lots of videos a day. I don't want you to lose money, but fuck me, I'd love to watch a fireball session. <laughs> when a you're that, fireball session. I'd love to watch it. When you're halfway oh, down a fireball, oh. fire up a video on. Because <laughs> 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 I reckon that would All make right. some fucking watching. I bet it would, mate. I'm going to lead it with us uh, just because of the, the, the texture of this board. Oh, absolutely, yes. Well, no um, one's folding ASX, are they? We just want to get three streets, don't anyone pot controlling. Sure. Oh, and I think you can just play exploitably in these games and just donk your really strong hands and yeah, not totally. really care that someone's going to pick you pick you up on it. Yeah, but never mind. Of, it was me that opened. I opened. But, oh, right. You know, oh, were you saying donk when you're just going to donk out? I thought you meant... Maybe you didn't say donk. Maybe I misheard. But, um, yeah, I mean, it. it's your dream situation. You've got bottom set on a board where they <laughs> call you with the 10x, ace x, and there's plenty of draws out there. We have to start better. We have to build a pot and we have to hope someone's in there with... With, yeah, exactly. With, with yeah. something that, I mean, if they're, if they're in there with like an ace ten or something, or an ace jack or whatever, then you're getting three streets all day, aren't you? And there's no reason to slow play because so many hands can call. In fact, if you had say pocket twos there, and I said see bet bluff, you'd be like, Are you fucking crazy. 
you know, so much can call what's the point in bluffing. So any point where it's crazy to bluff, it's a fucking good time to value bet. Yes. You see that is, uh, Zeke. See that you see that with that guy there though, the the, the Zeke that I was talking about. Um, you know, he is literally calling most yeah. hands. I mean, I, I defend quite wide versus like smaller raises from button, but I wouldn't be defending the five deuce versus the three X. Just, it, it's just, it's got to be massively unprofitable long term, especially if you're going to play it as badly as he did post flop. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't mind the, the I don't mind the flop, these, didn't he? I don't mind these lead out on the, um, no, on the he, turn. He's, he's defended too wide pre, in my opinion. Then he's just check called a good shot on the flop when he probably has a, a reasonable range for check raising there with with his good shots and things because he can have a lot of like six x four x. He can have flop boats. He can have flop trips <coughs> a lot. Probably a bit more than we could have, um, or maybe equally to us. So it's a reasonable board for him to want to check raise anyway. Uh, but he doesn't. He just check calls his good shot. Donks out seven eight spot on the turn or whatever it was, and then checks the river when he makes his hand. I mean, to me, he played every street incorrectly, but there you go. What do I know? I'm just a fucking old nit these days. Sorry, mate. I've been an old nit, and this fucking game is uh, the best way to be. Oh yeah, it's doing me no harm. It's doing, I'm trying to be. No I'm harm. trying to be more nit. I'm, I'm trying to be more of a nit. Um. My free betting is what are your fucking stats? Go click on yourself and we'll man. see what your stats are. Just out of interest. Slow. Free, yeah, two point. No, no, I mean like you're thirty four nineteen. Yeah, I'd say you can definitely afford to tighten up from that. I don't mm -hmm. think it's, I mean, I'm not entirely sure how this hood works because I think um, it counts putting blind in as v pipping because it's very late. It? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's only like my <clears throat> my guess. Yeah, I use it as a very rough guide. Because as, I've um... got years and years of playing on Holden Manager where I know my stats long term are like, yeah. I don't know, 2015 with a 5% three bet. And on here, I'm somewhere like 25, 17 with, a, with like a 2 or 3% three, three bet. So I know it's not super accurate. It's, it's, Gives you an idea of how people are playing, but it's nowhere near as accurate as holding manager. And I think maybe it's because um, every time you fold, it sees it as a chance to miss three bet whether someone's opened or not. I think it maybe counts putting the blinds in as, as V pipping because it's just out of line with what I've seen over like 14 years of playing with the hood of like just being really consistent with my ranges and then it's a little bit different on here. Not massively different, but different enough where I think it's obviously collecting the stats and and like expressing them in, in a in a using a different method to do that than holding manager does. I just can't figure out exactly what it is it's doing differently. It doesn't matter though, because all we're looking for really is people with super high V pips and super large gaps between V pip and PFR, just so we can classify them as like knit, loose aggressive, loose passive or whale, isn't it? It's all we're really looking for. We're never gonna make a huge decision based off HUD stats on here. It's just what sort of player is this? Loose passive, loose aggressive, super loose yeah. passive or or like tag or what have you. I tend um, I tend not to pay much attention to it anyway. I just um I tag players on hands that I've played against them. Yeah. You know, if I, if I see someone making an absolute spew, I just put them as gold. Yeah, well, well a good um, note is always going to be worth more than, than than a stat. I mean, one note, probably not. But if, you can, if you're good at note-taking, then long-term, that's better than just having stats because if you have the stats and the notes, you can see the stats and then the notes help you... Um, see how they're building their ranges because not all 2015s are created equally I mean I've, I've, I'm a 2015 who's like a knit in the first two seats and open up towards a cut off and button but I've seen plenty mm -hmm. of 2015s who play 19 V pip under the gun and only 24 V pip on the button so again stats can be quite deceptive stats don't show you is somebody positionally aware or not you know where do people do the three betting from and things like that because I see loads of players who used to play on, on snap who were basically opening the same ranges under the gun middle position cut off and then it was slightly looser from the button and you know you want a nice curve really don't you what i mean my curve was always something like 12 percent under the gun 16 percent 
um, from the middle position, 25% cut off, and then maybe 45% button, which is nitty, I accept. But at least you can see that, that progressive curve down the streets of my range getting wider, whereas you look at some regulars and their ranges, they play the same hand from all positions just about, which that's when you know, yeah, this guy's a regular, but he's a bad one. This guy's a regular, but he's a good one, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I said I just like to squeeze here, but I think I've been given the good news. Yeah, I think the three <sighs> completely in order. There's been two limps. He could easily yep. just be attacking the limps. Here's Jack's a perfect See fine hand to just three bet fold with. Ooh, I don't think that's still a bad board. Yeah, for us, anyway. yeah. If all the money goes in there, then you're second. Yeah, you definitely. are certainly in second place. But I think uh, flat. We can't really flat there. You don't really want to play ace check out of position to what we end up being four or five players. So I think yeah. three bets definitely in order. And then when the four bet comes in, it, yeah, it's just ace check off suit. We just pitch it. Who cares? I'm doing. I'm doing a lot the same way. Ace king out of position. If I get three bet, I'm four bet folding it. Um, four bet folding ace king. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing, I mean, I'm it doing, could be, I'm it doing could it because... be correct, but I just haven't got that. In, I haven't got that in my arsenal. I think in a lot of occasions against a lot of players, folding ace king pre flop is probably by no means bad. But I haven't got it in. I have, that is not a tool I've got in my box. If I put the fourth bet in with the ace king, then I'm paying them cunt right off. No mistake. Right. You've got the ace king of pain. I'm not. No, I'm not saying that's good. By the way, I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. That, that just isn't a tool I've got in my box. Um, well, I just found. Well, what I've found yeah. is when, when I get four bet, we I, on on this site I, so far I haven't encountered anyone who's four bet me short of kings. Right. Okay. You know, um, basically what happened, what how how I'm looking at it is, like ace king tends to jam with the four bet. It doesn't tend to you know just four bet. Um, kings tends to you know four bet quite big aces four bets but generally I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of you know shoving with aces and that and I'm not seeing a lot of um, a lot of players you know kind of four yeah. betting ace king well, uh, I it's... think people's attitudes towards ace king is changing a little bit I've watched a few vlogs and a few bits and bobs of this and that and then um... You know, so I've I've certainly seen some players on on Twitch and some players on like the like the Brad Owens of the world. He said he started flatting Ace King a lot more. Now he's a live player playing full ring, so that makes a difference. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I've seen a few streamers who are pr very very good have like really good good records. Just sometimes flatting Ace King versus standard opens from maybe early position. If they're I'd say early positions open, they're in the cutoff. I mean, they're obviously mixing some three bets in. Mm -hmm. It's something but, um, I do. It's, it's they're if, open if to I'm flatting the big it too now as well, and not looking to just pile like hundred big blinds in pre with Ace King, or even exactly. like sixty, seventy blinds in pre with Ace King. And I think it's quite nice to have it, to have it in your flatting range sometimes, because then you get to have some stronger hands on certain flots where they can try and represent your actual hand. So it's nice to mix it all up, as long as you're not overdoing it one way or the other. And um, yeah, I, I certainly. Don't oh, it's not a slow playing ace king too. <laughs> ace, 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 the the four bet fold is not a a, a tool that I use very often. Is <laughs> <No. laughs> is one that I use when maybe I'm uh, I'm three hundred big blinds deep and so is other <clears> player. Yeah, you know I like to just uh, make that min rate that min <coughs> four bet and then just wait on the shove or the the, the huge six bet and I'm just like on the huge five bet sorry and just be like yeah okay I, I'm done that's me I'm fine yeah I, I my can four fold bet it. folding is typically only against decent regulars who three bet a fair amount and then I can pretty much exclusively say it's just my suited wheel aces that I'm using so if I'm playing against someone half decent who's got position on me then I will probably four bet like ace deuce through ace five suited with a pretty high frequency as a bluff but that's about it maybe occasionally against a fish i'll four bet ace queen kind of for value but then happily fold it to a five bet so i'm not turning ace queen into a bluff yeah. you know, i'm doing it for value against someone who i think might be a bit a bit bad but when they jam i'm like right well my ace queen needs to go in the bin now yeah but it's for, for four bet fold is not <clears throat> it's not a two like but I, say, I, only do it, often. I only do it when I'm um, out of position and it's not suited. I'll tell you what else I do it too. When I'm fucking tilting, I'll, I'll do it then. And I'm ah, fuck you! And I'll just like, randomly throw a, a jack nine suited four bet in and get jammed on and get even more tilted. Yeah. Yeah, so if yeah, I'm four betting, I've either got a suited wheel ace, aces, 
or I'm fucking tilting my tits off. That's basically my four betting range. It's like four bet bluff versus regs, four bet for thin value versus fish and tilt. They are they are the <laughs> they are the reasons for four betting in, in my house. <laughs> is it really is it that bad? And if my wife's four betting when she's playing, her reason for four betting is aces. And that's it. <laughs> that's well, her, yeah, I mean that's possibly much possibly kings if she's getting shot in the tournament. It's pretty standard, that, isn't it? There's Zeke call me again. Like, this guy is fucking relentless. <laughs> you can't this let him get under your skin, though, mate. you just got to play your ranges against him still. You, yeah, you can't yeah. be letting him get under your skin. I'm no. I'm no. As I say, but the guy the guy, is call, the guy calls so much out of his blind that it's unbelievable. He just, all the time, calls. Does he three bet? <laughs> is he not a three better? No, is he fuck, mate? Well, well, then, then punish him by just making it more expensive for him to defend. Just by, instead of making it 3x, make it 3.5x. If he keeps just calling, fuck it, make it 4x. Just, like, well, if you found a leak it. in his game that he defends his blind too much, then punish him for it by making it more expensive for him to do so. And if he still continues calling, the more you can make him call with weak ranges pre-flop, the more you're printing long-term. Sky's free bet ranges... Not point seven four percent. He didn't even know the three bet button existed, did he? He just fucking did, did he? A lightning three bet that bad boy. I think he might have just broke the three bet button or the raise button. It's not the three bet button, is it? Oh uh, yeah. So you played a bit on a uh, bit on Sky Poker last night. I played and, two and, of it and again. You, and you and fucking, fucking bubbled. Hated my life. I didn't stone bubble. I think I finished twentieth of eighteen. Something like that. I played really well, really patiently. And a couple of half decent players at my table who were just like opening really wide. And I, when I was on like a 15 blind stack, there's nothing I could do about it. And then um, I got Queen's blind versus blind um, jammed. Some guy in the big blind had me covered, called with ace five off, which might be a good call, might not. It didn't feel good to me. I thought he'd probably made a mistake. But um, maybe ace five is also a standard call for ten bigs. I have no fucking clue. But anyways, he flopped a good shot. Turn was a brick. And then he rivered a four for a wheel. And I didn't hate the game. I didn't hate anything about it. You know, I'm just like, fuck, why would I just waste another three hours in the fucking tournament? That's all I've been doing since lockdown started. There's been like home games on stars I've wanted to play. So I'm like, well, well I'm playing a home game on stars. I'll play a couple of Sky tournaments and I've barely played any cash in like fucking nine days now because I've been playing tournaments for three or four hours of a night time. And so then basically it, what you're just setting fire to your money then, mate. Is that, is that um, what you're doing? Well, long term, no, because I'm, I'm probably profitable in them. But yeah, I'm setting fire to me fucking time. Because yeah. um, by the time I've, I've busted the tournament, it's fucking half 12 at night, 1 in the morning. <coughs> so I've got to wait an hour before I get that little bit of fucking annoyance out of my system. And then it's like, oh, 2 o'clock, can I really be starting a session? When I could have just easily put about 20, 25 hours cash game sessions in at the same time. And instead of losing mm. 200 quid, maybe I would have won a couple of hundred. I mean, I'm not annoyed because I've enjoyed myself, but... I say I put a post on Facebook yesterday saying if anyone catches me playing MTT, I'll donate <laughs> yeah, so 50 that, yeah. quid to their NHS because um, I just want to stop playing them now. <laughs> Apart from like <clears throat> home games on Stars with friends, I'll still play them, but only our weekly Saturday night game now. I'm not playing the nightly ones because that's when I start, right, I'll have that up. And then because I play on my iPad, I find it hard to concentrate on my computer and my iPad at the same time for the yeah. cash games. So I end up just sacrificing hours when I could be playing cash to play a piss pot ten pound freeze out with a lot of local like I don't get around the bad players. But you know, my ROI's probably even if my ROI's a hundred percent, I'm only making a tenner long term and it's taking me three or four hours to make that tenner. So it's just yeah. not it doesn't make sense to do it. But on a Saturday night with my friends where we all fight a Skype up and you know, like have a proper decent social occasion which let's face it we can't have while we're in lockdown I mean we had no. a game Saturday night it was brilliant crack I went out fucking second which um, top two versus bottom set of course because I'm in it and going out second isn't a thing for me usually unless it's a cooler um, but I just stayed in the call for like four hours because it was just such a good crack so I'm oh, still going to play I'm still going to play that but no as for any other tournaments absolutely not because it's just not a good use of my time really to be fair yeah, well, we're the same. We, we had a, a home games guy over an hour while he runs a kind of cash game um, at his hut. And he, he kind of wanted to get a, 
MTT gone. So, you know, he set it up and that, and he was like to me, oh, hello. And, um, did I just lead out here? No, I'm going to check. So the guy, um, he set this up, wanted to play the, um, the tournament, but he set it up so it was like 10 minute blinds. The fuck, man, the fucking everybody checking. This fucking annoys that, me. That is quite annoying. There's a fucking bad, a bad fucking turn as well. Um, I'm not sure. King Queen's just improved, hasn't it? Yeah, that's true. No one's actually fucking got anything. <laughs> that is very annoying. But the thing is, you can't expect to have two. The big black can have any two. And if under the gun's got pocket tens or something, then you never again. It's where you need someone to have the ace, don't you? Oh, yeah. turn King Queen. If that if that isn't happening, then you're just not getting value for your set. Exactly. So yeah, the, the guy he set up this uh, the, this table, and he got like you know twenty odd people want to play. So I was like, all right, you know, twenty two bucks. So I sat down. And I, bu I booked in for it. I didn't pay any attention. It was a cash game and the home game. So the, the guys are playing on stars for for cash games. I sat down and played in that. And you know, I, I don't know what I sound like a dick, but I battered everyone. Yeah. Um, and took like you know one hundred and sixty dollars or something off off the table. And then went to the playing the um, the tournament. I realised that the tournament were ten minute fucking blinds. Is that a good and thing I'm, or a bad thing? For me, bad, very bad. I mean, it was it was a, it was a, it was a full ring, nine nine players, ten minute tournament, mm. and it was like fucking pulling teeth because he started deep. It was a deep start, ten k chips. You would have hated our Saturday Chris, our Saturday home game then because I set it up, <clears throat> and um, I started ten k chaps, fifteen minute blinds. <laughs> Oh my god, it was, a... it was horrendous. The night before, the night before, they started at half past eight at night. Yep. It was still going on at half four in the morning. Oh no, ours didn't last that long. I was, I think we got 13 players, no, was it 11 players, I think we got. So 11 man sit and go. We started at 7.30 and it finished at um, 25 to 1 in the morning. So it lasted five hours for 11 man sit and go. That but is it, horrendous. Well, no, because we were having, you know, we wanted it to be something that lasted a while so, you know, everyone could carry on. Because it was much more of a social thing than a, anyone trying to make money thing. We had it like, we set it up in an 11 cent tournament because we didn't want to pay a star's rake. And then we all sent our mate 25 quid. So it's like a 25 quid buy in. Our live game, we call it Knitfest because it's, you know, basically almost every player has a fucking knit. And then we always start dead, dead deep stack. We have like 45, we start at our six at night. No one's ever home before like half one in the morning. Uh, so our, our usual live games, they run for a good seven hours. So I tried to set up a, an online game that would at least have four hours in it. And it turned up having, ended up having five hours in it. But everyone enjoyed the cells. It was, apart from my wife, she was tilting her brains out because she's a fucking amazingly mega knit. I set her up on Holder Manager once and then I just gave up the will to live because I watched, I looked at her stats over like 10,000 hands and she's played <laughs> 11 slash 5. And I was like, fuck off, Dawn, I can't teach you anymore, love. I'm just not interested. Um, yeah, she was first out because she decided to step out for once and play the Jack 8 suit in and got flush over flushed. So she was fucking raging. Then she went to add some... Um, bananas to our online Tesco shop and as she was doing it the app crashed so that tilted the fuck out of her as well and, um, and then she couldn't watch when she got knocked out she couldn't watch telly because I was downstairs and I said no you can't have that on love I'm talking and um, so that made her rage to the point where after like half an hour I just carried the laptop upstairs and carried on watching upstairs she was absolutely tilting her brains out she come to bed at like half eleven so night love give her a kiss and she was like yeah night <laughs> she was absolutely oh. fucking seething it was the worst Saturday ever for her because <clears throat> everything went wrong I think the Tesco thing pissed her off more than anything else because she'd put like an 88 quid shop together because we're shopping for a few people and it had all gone it was all done she got the order in but then she thought oh I'll get some bananas and then um, fucking app crashed mid transaction. <laughs> oh, that is sick, man. We, we can laugh about like... it now, but I'll be honest, at the time I was scared to speak to her because I thought if I speak yeah. to her, I'm going to get my head snapped right fucking off here. It sounds like my dad when he's putting the Avon through for my mum. You know, he does the Avon orders for my mum, and um, like my mum, you know, she's a complete technophobe. She doesn't even know how to work a DVD player. And uh, he does like the, um, he does like the, uh, the Avon order for her. And it's, it's hilarious because like half the time it'll crash halfway through it and then they get a double order. And then it's like his fault because he's fucking, he, he's the one that 
they put the order through and now I've got double the stuff and I have to return it. It's just rages for days and days. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it sounds, sounds pretty fucking similar. I think here. women are a pretty unreasonable breed when it comes to things going wrong. I mean, something goes wrong for me, I'm like, eh, whatever, he'll be fine, love. I'll just do it some other day. But anything that goes slightly wrong for Dawn, she's like, oh, fuck's sake, and she just rages her tits off at the, at the most yeah. trivial things sometimes. I'm like, just fucking chill out, love. Fine, if it, if it doesn't go through and we don't get it, then we'll just get it Monday. It's no big deal. But know, she's like, oh, this isn't perfect, and I'm going to fucking punch someone in the throat. <laughs> not good, mate. So what's the plans for today? Are you going my to be plans, making... Uh... Right, well, my plans today are... Um, well, we're in lockdown, so not fucking much. Finish making this video, upload it, um, go and get a couple of, pick up a couple of bits from the shop for my mum because she hasn't been out of the house. Well, she goes out for a little stroll, but I've banned her from shops. She's 83, so she's been firmly banned from all social contact with the outside world. Makes um, sense. So I'll take her shopping up with her. She's got like a little garden in front of, well, forecourt thing in front of her house, so I can sit like two and a half, three metres away from her, have a chat for 10 minutes. Um, it's my niece's birthday. It's a shame. It's, we're not going to be able to go and see her, which is going to be difficult for my wife. Uh, it's not about just going and taking a present down, but given the rules on fucking lockdown, it's kind of like you you want to do it, but you know you shouldn't. So I think my wife's having a tough day today because I'd love to go and see my niece too. She's fucking brilliant. But, you know, it's like we could go and stand outside her garden for 10 minutes and talk to her. But you're bending, you're bending the rules, aren't you? We're locked down doing that. We're not yeah, going to have contact um... with them, but we, are, we would be bending the rules. And I think it's important that we all stick to the rules because if, if you start bending them a little bit, then someone else bends them a bit more. Before you know it, they're not fucking working properly, are they? <clears throat> so Yeah, well, I think we're going to be... I think things are going to kick off anyway. Was, you know, I think, you know, three weeks of this, people accept it. After that, I'm not too sure. I think there are going to be a lot of people with a lot of disappointment then because I think they're just baby walking us. I think we're going to be another three weeks at house next week. And I can't see any of this being lifted until at least phew, end of May, at the, early, at the absolute yeah, I th earliest. I think I think they started June. I think we're looking at, it, but I mean, my wife, my wife works for Jet too, and um, I mean, I, I can't really talk too much about it. But you know, she, they, her managers are in for meetings today. Like they're talking about furlough and things are things are no looking good. Like the aviation industry is going to be on its knees. Yeah. Travel industry, the tourism industry in Scotland, England. You know, it's all going to be on its knees. I know a lot of people self-employed, and you've seen their. Um, their posts on Facebook, you know, they're they're really, you know, in trouble. I should have raised that. Uh, they're really in trouble, and we're only like, you know, a week in. And I, I, I'm almost thinking to myself, geez, man, you guys never heard their rainy day. Yeah. Like, you know, did you did your fucking mum never tell you when you were young? <clears throat> you know, save, <clears throat> save a little bit for a rainy day. But um, yeah, these fucking like the lot of these people, man, they are absolutely screaming the world down right now. Yeah, I'm benefiting because I've. Um... For a long time now. When I, when I was <clears throat> 18 to 30 odd, I was literally, whatever income you gave me, I would have fucking lived beyond it without any fucking question. I was a drinker, I was a gambler, I had a young family. Um, I wasn't like irresponsible, I made sure all the bills were taken care of and stuff, but any, any of my expendable so, cash, that was it. It was fucking in, it was in play either in the pub or. You know, um, and what have you. It makes me sound like a bad father. I wasn't a bad father, but you know what I mean. It was like, I didn't... So say, odd, mate. It's saving so wasn't odd. a thing, you know. And then yeah. now, I've got, I live such a fucking modest lifestyle now. We've got two cars because we need it for work. And our best car is only a 10 plate. Um, we've mm -hmm. got like... Yeah, we've got an all right telly, but not a fucking, you know, super smart one. We got it brand new about two or three years ago. And I'll keep that to the brakes now. You know, and I don't have a particularly expensive lifestyle, so I've been able to, like, put some money away and, that like, the pub's closing makes no difference to me. I don't drink anymore. So I, I'm lucky in terms of, like, lockdown isn't affecting me. I can still make money from poker. But, yeah, I'm looking at people and thinking, you're my age. You earn off. Maybe you don't know as much as me now, but for the past 15 years, you've earned way more than me, and it feels yep. like you're one paycheck from fucking being on the streets. And I'm like, how can yeah, how yeah. can you manage? And I don't mean to sound like condescending or cocky or arrogant or smug, but I'm like, how can you manage your money so badly for so long? That you know, when you're one paycheck from fucking being on the streets. Disaster. Yeah, when yeah, you've, been earning, you've been earning thirty grand a year. Your wife's been earning. She's been in that at a. At a 
annual income of fifty grand a year between you, and and you know you because you've got the the big fancy car on the fucking you know where it's never yours. I've got a couple of friends who they got massive Huge mortgage cars. And... They, yeah, they yeah. got the mortgage. They, they basically got themselves where they can afford everything they've got as long as nothing goes wrong. But they, if anything goes wrong, they've got nothing because they're living to it. So they've never been able to save. And like I say, I've got a friend, probably my best friend, I fucking love him to bits. And I said to him a while back, he's got a, like a brand new Audi that he's got on some kind of deal where you're basically always renting it, but it's yours after so long, but he always upgrades. And yeah. uh, that costs him 300 quid a month. He's got his mortgage, he's got this, he's got that. And uh, to be fair, I think he has the last four or five years saved a little bit so he's not too bad but I know some people who they're always being flash bastards for the last four or five years bragging about all the holidays they go on bragging about all the possessions and now they're on Facebook shit in the pants and I don't and I feel bad for them but at the same time I'm like well you know you, you maybe could have been a little bit better prepared for something going wrong you know it's like they've, they've got all the money's tied up in their assets rather than yeah. actually having yeah, liquid right. cash to get them through a few months with a, with a reduced income and I'm just like come on lads um, I think there'll be a lot of cultural changes come out of this I think a lot of people will be a lot more sensible with their money there'll be a lot more forward planning I think there'll be a lot less people going on foreign you know, holidays and things it's funny because I actually think to myself right the, you know the kids the kids right now, or the young, or the yeah. young folk, they're, they're not the ones that are suffering. They're all sitting and saving their money. You know, they're yeah. paid for their jobs, and they, they've not got big overheads. They're not going out at the weekends and spunking all their money up against the wall. And it's so it's just it's guys in their forties and fifties, and they're 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 absolutely fucking shitting their pants. Yeah, absolutely. You know, guy, guys that might have like had a million pound business at the start of this is going to have nothing at the end. Yeah, my and, kids, they're exactly as the. the... The, the people you're talking about and yeah. you know they are going to I've been talking to them about it saying look now you've got a good time now to save some money because they're like every other kid they get the wages and it, and the wages run out before the fucking month does every month mm-hmm. they're always oh dad lend me 50 quid till pay day I'm like it's never my 50 quid is it because I lend it to you then <laughs> two weeks later I'm fucking lending it you again it's never mine but I've told yeah. them now it's kind of like well you know, that was a good time. They're eighty percent. Well, two of them are on eighty percent wages because they work in nurseries and they've been shut down. Middle lad mm-hmm. works in a shop, so he's still working. But they can't spend it. They can't spend it on like maybe both my lads like a little flutter at the weekend, sports betting and stuff. None of that has happened happening now for them. Um, they like to go out for a drink. None of that's happening. So I said to him, "You really need to just all the money that you used to spend on gambling and drinking, just save it, save it, save it. At the end of this, mm-hmm. you know, you might have a couple of grand saved, <clears throat> and then you, you know, you, you're not in a bad <coughs> position." And my elders like. Oh, I'll find someone to spend it on dad. I'm like, when well, you're a fucking idiot, then aren't you, son? Because you got a good chance here to, you know, you're relatively good money for someone his age. And um, he's got a good chance to save a few quid, but he probably fucking won't. So all you can do is advise him, isn't it? My middle son oh, yeah, last definitely. night, he's, he's 20, and he's messaging me, oh, dad, where's a good site to play poker? I said, for you, fucking nowhere, mate. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it anyway. He ended up putting 11 quid on Sky to play a couple of tournaments. And um, I messaged him later, how did you do? He went, yeah, it wasn't great, dad. I'm like, yeah, not surprised, son. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I said, whatever you do, said, just don't go fucking mad. But at the minute, he's got a debit card, which won't let him deposit to gambling sites, whether it's a particularly young debit card or something. So he's got to do yeah. all his deposits through me. Um is playing on my wife's account, so he's sending me the money, she's loading the chips, so I can control it, because I'm, I'm always worried that they might end up playing poker, the next thing they get the, oh, I'll have a little game of roulette, before you know it, you spunked off a month's wages in, in half an hour playing roulette, so fortunately, cause my young lad is lovely, he's nice, but he's, yeah. he's not responsible yet, and if he had his own bank card, and access to an online casino, then, I'm not saying he would do it, but if he did have a go at it, I could see him being the sort of lad, who'd be like, oh, fucking, you know, before you know it, spunking eight hundred quid in a night. So thank. Oh, a lot of people, a lot of people, especially in this time. You know, I watch, um, I watch a little bit of um, some some streamers and that, and anybody that's talking, they're like, you know, don't gamble what you can't afford. Don't go to poker to try and make up your income. Yeah. This is it's no yeah. good. Idea. Like everybody's like pr- proper pushing the gam stop thing, and yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I totally agree with what everyone's saying. You, you've got to watch, especially in these times. It's, yeah, a lot well, of people uh, will will kind of go into DJ mode. There's a couple of people who who's doing the affiliate thing with me and they've like spun it up, lost a bit, spun it up, lost a bit. So now I've I've said to a couple of them and they've actually gone ahead and done it, is that don't withdraw because you only have to deposit and incur more fees. But I said, I'll just take some of the money back off you for now, put it in like the floating funds 
And then mm-hmm. because they'll just run it up, they'll play a 10 and they'll win 20 and they'll win 40 and they'll win 60. They'll end up playing 100 and games are not good enough for. You know, they'll spin $200 up to 1,000 and then next thing they're hitting me for a reload. And so I'm, I try and encourage people, or if I think someone's making a lot of deposits, I'll be like, come on, mate, are you okay? Are you sure you're all right? Um, <laughs> are you talking about me? Uh, just, no, just, no, well, you know? yeah, you're, you're in my mind, but you're not the only, you're not the only person. And I will yeah. try and be responsible because much as I want people playing so I can make more affiliate cash, I'd fucking hate to think that I was in any way like contributing towards someone's fucking problems, you know. So oh, yeah. and, and it's right, you've got to be responsible. And if you think someone's going a bit off the rails, you at least have to have the conversation. Yeah, definitely. And as I'm, I'm responsible in what I'm doing. I know um, I'm playing within my means, which is always... Um, yeah, that's the thing. I don't know what his financial important. status. Fucking Rob from Kentucky, he might he might work in fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken and earn ten dollars an hour and not afford it, or he might work at a fucking Mercedes dealership and have hundred grand in the bank. I don't know what people's yeah. financial situations are, so all I can say to him really is, are you sure we're still all right? You know, if you want to take a break or you know, if you want and to have a chat about anything, that's, and it's because it's the right thing to do. And um, yeah, most people know what they're doing, don't they? I guess. <laughs> Yep, especially as you say, this is this being this site that we're on, all these sites that we're on, they're not GamStop regulated. No, there's, there's no so, protection you know. whatsoever on these sites. It's like the fucking Wild West. You know, it's, it's no, yes. there's absolutely zero protection in any shape or form. So you need mm-hmm. to be like self-regulating or having somebody like myself around who's willing to have the awkward conversation with you. You know, like I don't take any pleasure from like messages on saying you sure you're all right at the minute do you want to take a few days off because it's patronizing as fucking condescending as fuck but at the same time i'd feel really shitty if i didn't have that conversation and the next thing they're telling you me that the fucking, someone's yeah, fucking, telling they're fucking broke and you can't afford to pay the rent or you can't afford to buy the kids some new shoes then i'd yeah, exactly, feel fucking then you're horrendous then going, well, mate, what you want me to fucking do you <laughs> yeah. then you become you become the, the prick agent <laughs> Which, 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 you know? Yeah, which I never want to be. I want to. I want. I want people to deposit, enjoy themselves, hopefully make some money. But I don't want. You know, I'd, I'd pack this in in a heartbeat. If I thought I was contributing to people ending up destitute, I'd just be like, right, I'm not doing this anymore. But this um, is actually better, mate. This is so much better. Like stars and that, they don't give a fuck how much money you've got. No, like they ain't doing checks on how how much people can afford to lose. And you know, you could just go on stars, and I've done it on party poker, like you know, the deposit, deposit, deposit. I've I've made like you know big big wins. I had a bankroll at one point last year, like eight thousand pounds, and you know I, I'd done like a couple of that very quickly on um, on um, party poker, and like jumped up the the stakes, played poorly, didn't they? Didn't they? Didn't win money, and you know it was it was kind of like four point five point where I just kind of went right okay I'm, I'm going to step back and I stopped and I took about a month off um, you know I went on a holiday and, and booked things and that and it just you know it was so much better that way than to continue the yeah. the way that I was doing but the, the site had no qualms in me going £200 deposit, £200 deposit, £200 deposit, £200 deposit and that's in like one night Yeah. and no one was even looking at it I mean if I was hitting you up four times a night for a £200 deposit you're you're gonna you're gonna go out to me, home, mate. Like, you know, have a word. Yeah, well, we've had the conversation, on, haven't mate. we? I mean, I don't want to break any confidences on a video, on a YouTube video, <laughs> but we've had that conversation because I genuinely don't want to think of anyone who's coming through me making their life worse for themselves. Poker should be primarily, especially in lockdown, something to do to fucking pass some time so you don't go mental. And hopefully you win a few bob. But if you lose a few bob, it doesn't matter as long as you can afford it. That's how it should be. But if I think people are like depositing often and frequently, then um, then I'm, I am going to have the conversation. I don't like doing it, and I'm always nervous about what response I'm going to get. But I'd much rather do it. How someone say, "Fucking mind your own business, you fat prick," and then at least I know. <laughs> well, I've, you know, my conscience is clear now. Than than not have the conversation. I mean, I, when I first broached it with you, I was like, "Fuck, this could go either way." I didn't know you very well. You could have got. You could have oh. easily gone either way. You could have told me to mind my own business or out. But I like to think that I word it in a way that does demonstrate I actually am fucking doing it because I give a shit and not just because. You know, I'd... yeah. Well, I mean, to, to clear up kind of what we were doing, like mine's was you know twenty forty pound deposits. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't of yeah, they weren't constant ones. ones. Um, then I did make it obviously. I made a, a, a large one and then withdrew, missed it uh, when I went up and then bust it. 
because of the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, this one, this one the day, I've, I've, as I say, since the start of the channel, I've only done a hundred pound. Yeah. And I, I really, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm making these videos, and I'm quite happy at the at the level of play that I'm playing. Of course. I'm just gonna, I'm just it's, gonna build the videos. And to be fair, I can honest. Go on, sorry, boss. No. No, basically, what I can be honest is that you know, next day if I ever hit you up for a, re a refund, like for another um, another deposit, and you can go on and you know you don't see me busting it in one of my videos, you know that I've went off the rails, and you can just turn around to me and go, mate, what, what the fuck happened? Yeah, of course, yeah. You know what happened to your channel? I thought you were going to build this channel, doing um, building it up on you well, poker, well, so we could is, uh, all have something to watch. If you're depositing <laughs> like hundred pound a week. I don't care. That's not something that's going to break you. So I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even contact you. I think it was like you had, we had a couple of days where it was just like every hour or so. And I was like, "Come on, mate, if, you, if you're a bit steamed." I, I think I said, "Oh, take a couple of days or whatever," because it felt to me like you were just like probably small deposits and punting small deposit. And that isn't. No one's getting any fun from that. You know, that's just someone no. who's tilted and is probably not enjoying it whilst also losing the money. And that's what I was thinking, right, well, this guy's probably not enjoying himself right now. And he's, you know, he's not losing a lot of money. You know, like you said, it's only like regular small deposits, but he's not enjoying himself. So let's just at least have the conversation. And to be fair to you, you were, you took it in exactly the spirit it was intended and, and that well, was all good. But I, I, I can tell, I can tell that you're a caring, <clears throat> straight up, honest guy. Um, it's why, you know, I'm making videos on the on the U poker, and you know I, I'd like people to watch them. It'd be, it'd be entertaining if people were to watch them and comment. Even on my my shit plays where I make really bad moves, and they go, "Oh God, mate, what are you doing there?" I don't mind, but um, you know I, I I like to kind of promote what you're doing because I kind of I I would like to see you be successful at your affiliate business because I think you you know you do work with the community. You do work for charity, the, the, the kind of stuff that you're doing. You just seem like a really good guy and you deserve, you know, a good run at it. Well, thank you, but I appreciate that. It's very nice of you to say so. Uh, yeah, and to be fair, it is going well. It's going better than when I started this seven months ago. I wouldn't have expected to be at the point where I am now. I, I was expecting to make, you know, if I, I thought if I make 100 quid a week, then I'm fucking happy. It's just a little side hustle. Um, so I'm really pleased how it's going. But yeah, still, but the, my absolute priority has always and will always be, you know, the people I'm working with, looking after them, because me and, my reputation and my integrity is everything to me. It's worth way more than fucking money. Okay, and um, all, I, all I care about is, I mean, things can go wrong and people can lose money, but as long as they don't question my integrity at the end of it, then then I'm fine with it because we all know the risk when we come into these things. You know, these are, yeah, I, I these are not safe places responded. to play, you know. Yeah, I did, and, and when we had that... Everybody little, responded up, last week. They did, yeah. and, um, and it, look would have it, nothing went wrong in the end. But the, the mm -hmm. response I got to the threat of something going wrong was really positive and I think that is testament to the fact that I do have good stock in the community and protecting yes. that is absolutely you know it's it's my it, yeah. absolute priority I mean yeah of course I want to keep making money but if if I thought no we need to get off these sites everyone needs to stop playing then I would I would put that message out with a heartbeat and instantly like effectively render myself unemployed but I would do it in a heartbeat because at least then when things get better you can come back and your reputation's intact because it takes years to build a reputation up it takes seconds to fucking ruin it and uh, yeah, exactly. I'm, not I'm not intending to ruin it anytime soon yeah yeah totally agree with you mate and um, as I say I'm, I've got to really thank you for, for allowing me to come on your show as well um, I appreciate you know, it stop yeah, it's stop good, making it? another generic 10 and L video talking bollocks for 45 minutes I think in terms of like the, the conversation we've had it hasn't been super poker heavy but hopefully no. it's still been engaging for the people watching yeah, well, I mean, you've got a lot of guys. I would actually be really interested in, you know, seeing maybe a couple of these um, these type of conversations with some of your really good players. Like, is it Tom, the guy that's got the the super setup for the MTTs? And um, that's Josh. Josh, sorry, yeah, Josh. Yeah, um, yeah I'd probably like, to, you know, if you could maybe get Josh on and do some chats about what he's doing, I think it would be, you know, really entertaining. Yeah, it'd be nice. I mean, I think William might be up for it too. William's a very good guy. He's a far superior player to me, so I, mm -hmm. I, I could I could do it under the guise of let's make a video, of William. Then I could just like try and suck all his knowledge out of him at the same time. That'd be delightful. Exactly, and as I say, <clears throat> it, 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 it mixes things up for your it um, does. for your blogs rather than it just being you know yourself on playing playing the poker on you know as you say you are obviously trying to sell the site, but equally. 
it would be good entertainment for your uh, for your channel. So Definitely. maybe something to think about going forward. Definitely. And you know, if, if if my if my YouTube channel manages to get a few views, you never know. I might yeah. be able to bring you back on. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. I'd, I'd very be very happy to like guest on your channel if you ever wanted me to. No problem whatsoever. I think it's important okay. that all people YouTube, Twitch. That's why I shared the Duesenberg's Twitch stream to Facebook last night. I think it's important that all the little guys support each other and back each other up because that's how you build. That's how you build a following, it's how you build your communities, isn't it? Anyway, yes. we'll play these kings, buddy, then we'll wrap it up, I think. Because we've we all... got a good chance to felt the Zeke here, which would be a delightful way to end the video. Wouldn't it just? I do say I do tend to end my videos with exciting hands, but um <laughs> we will see if we, if we jams here, I'm just gonna absolutely shit myself. Well we are very deep, aren't we? Three hundred big steeps, so fuck me. We are. We are. I just want to see a nice flop here that's not got an ace. Oh, that's not a nice flop. It's, it's not a nice flop. I would not be it. betting. I seriously would not bet here, me. I would be just no. check calling pretty much. That just smashes his like three bet calling range. He can have like, well, no, we can have sets too. We can't have sets of eights. He can eights, have eights, tens. tens, and queens. We really only have queens, maybe tens. I like a check call here a lot. If he checks back, then I would just check call down here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about betting unless he misses a street. Because this is actually, I mean, this board is getting worse Jack's and worse. Just yeah. come in. <laughs> it just gets worse, doesn't it? And I've no issue horrible. just check folding this turn, me. I have no yeah. issue with it whatsoever. Fucking horrible, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Although the jack does give me the nut straight, the second nut straight. Ah, uh, that's horrible, isn't it? But you that? do whatever you want to do. I personally, I'd just check fold, but you do whatever you want to do, could. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah, okay, I'm going to call. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call. I, I feel it, I feel it. You feel it in your bones, are you? I feel it. I feel him in front. I think he's got his. I think he's got his queen. <laughs> I'm praying he's got. Well, his I'm not queen worried about the flush coming in because he probably shouldn't have many flushes. I'm much more worried he's got pocket eights or pocket tens personally, or some kind of jack X. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see. So he probably ships it away. Many things that have been there. Oh, terrible, 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 terrible. Do we ever do we ever win here? I'm saying nothing. I'm taking the fifth. Taking the fifth. Taking the fifth. Fuck it, I'm gonna call. Let's see what he's got. He's got pocket fives. Thank wow, you. Wow, that yeah, is baby. fucking aggressive. It'll, it'll Play me. Take <clears> it down. <throat> Let's go. Felted him. Like, just like I said, end of the video, he gets felt. Well, he never get felted, but he nearly got felted. That felt is a teeth, spectacular end to the video. I, I would have folded the turn. I'll be honest, I'd have been fucking well and truly out of there. Big balls, <clears> mate. Big big balls. That's but what it is. That does show the benefit of checking rather than rather than betting. Because if you lead out there, he probably just yeah, folds his fives. <clears throat> so it does show the benefit of sometimes like uh, having some strong hands in your checking range on boards that, you know, do crush it. Because that board crushed his calling range pre-flop. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely crushed it. So in a spot where your opponent <laughs> does have something of a range advantage, it is even when your strong hands, yeah, but especially when you're strong, it's nice to have, nice to put some of them in your checking range. So I'll take credit for the flop check, and then I give you the credit for the turn and river course because I would never have fucking made them. So excellent. We'll, uh, excellent. We'll, we'll take a bit of credit each for that one, I think, because I think you were about to bet the flop, and I think if you did that, you probably wouldn't have. You, you probably would have just won the won the pot well, there, and then wouldn't you? I bet this flop, bro. I could bet this flop. All the sixes. Have you been? To, have you flop. you was three bet pre work, yeah? He, he, he called 4-bet, after he, he bet, called 4-bet. He called 4-bet. Yep, and then checked. Which, you know, puts a lot of um, ace-kings and the likes. Box holes. Ah, I don't like that, though. This job is okay. fucked, mate. This job is well yeah. and truly fucked. Right, all right, I'm, I'm not, I've not got the big enough box to call this this time. I think pocket 10s um, are in rough shape here. But who knows? Yeah, who I'm... fucking knows? Let's see. We're going to we're gonna are find you? out, aren't we? That's for sure. Yeah. We're going to find out. It's, um, right, we're gonna, I'm just going to exit this anyway. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, Get back on them tens, though, but we need to know the end of the story, don't we? Oh, my day. Oh, my, oh my God. Sweet fucking Jesus. What the fuck is this? This is so sick. Yeah, the Queen 3. What's the Queen 3 doing in there? What the, the Queen 3. My tens are so good here. Sweet Jesus. I think the guy's actually looking at the insurance. <laughs> Take insurance. He's took insurance. It's insurance. He's three. Insurance. Fair play to him. My God. Fucking oh, okay. sweet. Well, that it's got to so... be said, it's taken to the end of the video, but fuck me, that's been a good five minutes advertisement for the site, hasn't it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can, you can uh, you can, uh, what do you call it? 
put put the little um yeah I think, oh, I think we'll be... get a, yeah you can get a little thumbnail going on that bad boy I think we'll be clipping it as well I think at some point because we had a like a relatively standard session then it all went absolutely mental at the desk so I'm glad we did a longer than usual video but thank you ever so much for that Ross I genuinely yeah, genuinely enjoyed it. it and I'm sure that um the people who've been watching my channel every day will definitely appreciate an extra voice in there um generate some what I thought was really good conversation about poker and the social problems that we're all living through at the minute. So thank you ever so much for that, Ross. I really, really do appreciate it, sir. No problem. It's been a pleasure, Reggie. Yeah. And I'll talk to you soon. Super. Right, buddy, you, you take, take care. care, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there we go, everybody. That was um, hopefully a fun video for you guys. I certainly enjoyed making it, especially at the end. We peaked right at the death, didn't we? Um, all that's left for me to say is, and what I usually say at the end of these, is just take care. Stay safe, look after each other, look after your mental health, look after the people you care about, look after the people you don't care about. Stay safe, everybody, and we'll be back tomorrow with another video, and we'll leave you with some tiled shots of the legend that is Barry Greenstein. Much love, everyone. Bye-bye.